I'm Gavin Giovanoni. I'm the Professor of Neurology at uh, Bath's in the London, and I'm going to be discussing multiple sclerosis under various different uh, topics. Uh, I think it's important to realise that it's the commonest uh, autoimmune disease of the central nervous system, and it has a large socioeconomic uh, impact, uh, and it actually is the commonest disabling and non-traumatic disease to affect young adults. Who is at risk of the disease? Um, we do know from an epidemiological perspective, uh, in the past it was considered a rich world disease in inverted commas, uh, in that it affected mainly people from uh, Western and Northern Europe uh, and their descendants. But it's quite clear that over the last 20 to 30 years, it's now a global disease and we're seeing an increased incidence uh, ac across the world. In terms of what causes MS, we don't know exactly what causes it. There's some uh, different theories around the causation of this disease, but we describe it as a typical complex disease. In other words, you have a genetic predisposition, and then now uh, a large number of variants in the genome that predispose you to multiple sclerosis. But the majority of the risk uh, resides in the MHC, the complex in the old DR2, now D DQW15. Um, it's quite clear that environmental influences interact with the genetic susceptibility genes, uh, and there must be something by chance, because the majority of people with the right gen genetics and the right environmental exposures don't get MS, so it's the minority, so there must be some uh, chance factor uh, that triggers uh, the autoimmune uh, disease. We do know that the susceptibility is uh, dependent on how much uh, uh, relatability there is. So the highest genetic risk occurs in uh, identical twins, particularly female identical twins, where in countries like uh, United Kingdom, Scandinavia and Canada, the concordance rate uh, in female monozygotic twins is about 30 percent. Interestingly, that changes with uh, latitude. So as soon as you go down towards uh, the equator, for example, in southern Europe, the concordance rate uh, drops off. So even in identical twins, it drops off to under 10%. Uh, and we know that there is this latitudinal gradient. The further you're away from the equator, the uh, uh, higher the incidence and prevalence of this disease. <clears throat> and we think that is due to uh, vitamin D uh, or lack of ultraviolet B exposure. Um, uh, and there is some good epidemiological evidence suggesting that uh, low vitamin D levels predispose you to uh, multiple sclerosis. And we think that acts not only uh, in childhood and adolescence, but also in the womb, in utero, because month of birth effect dictates uh, risk of getting MS. Um, the other big risk factor is exposure to Epstein-Barr virus. So people with MS almost ubiquitously have the virus, uh, and having the symptomatic infection uh, infectious mononucleosis or glandular fever is a real risk factor that puts your risk up by about two to two and a half times uh, background risk. Um, other environmental factors are childhood and adolescent uh, obesity. Uh, we know now that uh, that's a relatively recent uh, risk factor and it has been confirmed in numerous uh, studies and when we've done Mendelian randomization studies it looks like uh, obesity is in the causal pathway. Uh, another factor that's just recently emerged is uh, solvent exposure uh, and also smoking. We think that may relate to altering the environment within the lungs and maybe it's, it's some post-translational modification of autoantigens. So there are some modifiable uh, risk factors, which is why some of us think that we may be able to prevent uh, multiple sclerosis. But I think it's clear that these uh, risk factors uh, uh, don't only act uh, later on in life, um, it, it's quite clear there is uh, a microenvironment within the womb that predisposes you to multiple sclerosis. Month of birth, uh, as well as other factors that may play a role, so this is why we think epigenetics is important in multiple sclerosis. Um, just to give you the um, exact figures, the concordance rate between siblings is about 2.5%. Uh, but in unidentical twins, which have the same genetic loading, the concordance rate is uh, six and a half to seven percent, and that is highly significant. That difference suggesting uh, something in the in the womb, in the microenvironment in the womb, uh, predisposes you to the disease. So there's lots of 
epidemiological evidence to suggest that this now is a global disease, uh, increasing incidence worldwide, with environmental uh, risk factors uh, interacting with genetic factors to trigger this disease later in life.